One of the channel's Patreon supporters just asked me a question. He said, do you think California's economy will surpass that of Japan? The answer isn't will it. The answer is when will it happen? It's inevitable. The Japanese economy will lose a minimum of 15% of its GDP within the next 10 years, leading to an economic crisis, massive job losses, billions of dollars of lost revenue, and enormous structural changes to the Japanese economy. And it all comes down to one thing, a refusal to move and support the future of the automotive industry. Hello, my friends. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the channel, all the new subscribers, and welcome back, everyone else. If you're new, my name's Sam Evans, and I'm coming to you from Melbourne, Australia, and I will be at the Fully Charged show in Sydney in March next year. I'd love to see you there. I'll put a link in the description below for my 10% discount code for tickets, and I'll have a booth there. Come up and say hi. Make sure you see me. Now, if you're in Australia, Aussies, come along. If you're in the United States, I'll be at Fully Charged Show in October next year. If you're in the UK or Europe, I'll be in London in April next year at the Fully Charged Show, which is one of the biggest shows in the world. Obviously, if you don't know who Fully, Fully Charged are, they do the biggest events in the world for everything electric. Basically, they are the kings of putting on a show and getting you excited, showing you all the new technology. Manufacturers will be there. BYD will be there. MG will be there. There's going to be lots of electric cars that you can come and check out. The New York Times reported recently that California's GDP just surpassed that of Germany. One of the key reasons for that, Germany's GDP has contracted. It's gone down for a few straight years. California's GDP has continued to climb. And it's obvious why, right? Even though California's population is much smaller than that of Germany and much, much smaller than that of Japan, most of the world's big companies are still located in California. California's population right now sits about 39 million. Germany, about 82 million. But it doesn't seem like there's really that much of a direct correlation between population sizes and GDP. What is much more important is actually supporting innovation, supporting entrepreneurs. That, my friends, ultimately is what this comes down to. Whether companies can change, whether they can adapt, or whether companies can come from nowhere, invent new products, make new things, make new electric cars, Tesla, make new products like iPhones, Apple. Most of the world's biggest companies are actually headquartered in California. Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Wells Fargo, Alphabet, which is Google, Microsoft, the Walt Disney Company, Cisco Systems, Chevron, Bank of America, Intel, Oracle, Salesforce, Walmart, Adobe, Visa, IBM, ExxonMobil, Qualcomm, General Motors, Tesla, Applied Materials, AT&T, Western Digital, Johnson & Johnson, Boeing, eBay, Pacific Gas and Electric, and there's a whole host of other companies. Really what we should be most amazed about is not the fact that people are leaving California, which I've been hearing. It's that California's economy has proven so incredibly resilient through the pandemic and now through the current period of elevated inflation. So much so that the Golden Gate's gross domestic product will overtake Germany as the fourth largest in the world after the US, China and Japan. Now, California already leapfrogged Brazil in number seven and France number six in 2015 and it supplanted the UK number five in 2017. Although many of California's current figures won't be published until 2023, estimates say that the state has already caught Germany. With at least one forecast saying California is ahead by $72 billion when considering the state's recent growth rate. If you actually look at the charts, California's GDP has risen almost every single year for 30 straight years. It's been the most resilient economy in the world, bar none. And it's had the most consistent growth as well. California's trajectory is most transparent in the growing divergence between its 379 companies with a market value of at least 1 billion each and the 155 publicly traded firms based in Germany, 
meeting a similar benchmark, meaning California has more than twice as many companies worth more than a billion dollars. Whereas corporate California revenues and market capitalization rose 147% and 117% during the past three years, Germany must have gains inferior of 41% and 34% according to Bloomberg. The margin of Germany's nominal GDP of 4.2 trillion over California's 3.4 trillion last year was the smallest on record, but it's about to disappear. With Europe's largest economy barely growing in 2022, Germany, and forecast to shrink further in 2023, the outlook for Germany is actually quite stark. Why? Because Germany's biggest employer is the automotive industry, whether directly or indirectly, it supports millions of jobs. But it's much, much worse for Japan. Far worse. In fact, some estimates say that the automotive industry supports up to 89% of the Japanese economy, whether that's directly or indirectly. And with a population of over 120 million people, Japan right now is still the third largest economy in the world. But very soon, I would say within five years at the most, California's economy will surpass that of Japan's. For the last 10 years, Japan has been the second largest car exporter worldwide. It makes about 9 million cars locally, but it only buys less than 2 million of those every year. What does that mean? They're exporting around 7 million cars every year. But keep in mind, those cars, in fact, 99% of those exports are not fully electric cars. They're primarily gasoline powered vehicles. The reality is, Factories in Japan simply are not prepared or set up to manufacture and export electric cars. A new report says that Japan risks a 15% drop in GDP if it does not move swiftly towards producing electric cars. The Climate Group is a non-profit founded in 2003 with the intent to inspire global climate action. The report shows the status of auto sales in various regions with Japan lagging behind major markets in Europe, China, and the United States in terms of domestic EV sales. In fact, Japan's domestic electric vehicle sales have declined in the past two years. They represent less than 1% of all cars sold in Japan. Now that may not matter for the local population, sure. But the thing is, if Japan maintains or wants to continue exporting about 80% of the vehicles it produces, it will have to completely change what those vehicles are because only 2 million of the vehicles it produces are bought in Japan. The other 7.5 million go to really three major places, Europe, China, and the United States. Now, of course, we know that if Japan does decide to build EVs and then send them to the US, it's gonna be at a huge disadvantage versus local competition in the United States because the new Inflation Reduction Act gives $7,500 per car to companies who make electric cars in the US, but that doesn't include other incentives such as manufacturing the batteries in the US as well. So not only will Japan have to ship those cars all the way to the US and pay those shipping costs, which have increased significantly over the past three years, they'll also be at a massive price disadvantage due to that tax credit and the battery credits. Now the problem is actually significantly worse if you consider Japan's exports to China and to Europe. Japan exports more cars to China than any other country in the world. But by next year, it's predicted by the end of next year, 45% of vehicle sales in China will be fully electric vehicles. And as Japan doesn't make any electric vehicles, well, most experts are saying that China will no longer be interested in Japanese vehicles that are being made in Japan, period. The report notes that many major car markets are planning to reduce or eliminate the sale of internal combustion engine vehicles sometime in the 2030s. And of course, we know the European Union have banned the sale of non-electric vehicles from 2035 onwards. So what exactly does Japan plan to do with all the gasoline powered cars it's currently producing in its home country? Where are they gonna go? Who's gonna take them? China 
is nearly one third of the global car market. They're going to buy about 26 to 27 million vehicles this year. But remember, the Chinese are buying EVs. They're not all that interested in gasoline powered vehicles. If Japan is not able to produce EVs, this is a huge risk to its industry. The Japanese economy is massive, but it relies, of course, primarily on vehicle exports and vehicle production. Now, the report says that Japan is the most reliant country in the world on auto manufacturing and will risk losing half of its automotive exports, leading to the loss of 1.72 million jobs and 6 billion in automotive profits through 2040, resulting in a drop of 15% of its GDP. Japan's GDP is guaranteed to drop, but I don't believe it's gonna lose 50% of its exports. I believe it's more likely to lose around 80%. If you think that this report is um, biased or politically biased, well, you should keep in mind the fact that the CEO of Toyota actually agrees, and he stated similar figures in a speech a few months ago. Electric says that Japan's domestic EV targets lag behind every other major player. The EU will ban internal combustion engine vehicles in 2035. That's already been official. The UK in 2030. And in China, it's very unlikely there'll be any sales of anything but electric vehicles and plug-in hybrids in 2030. Japan refused to sign the COP26-2040 all-electric target. And as a result of Japan's intransigence towards green energy and transportation, it received a Fossil of the Day award. In fact, much of the Japanese automotive industry still believes that hydrogen powered cars are the future and they appear to be investing in those pretty heavily. What does all this come down to? Japan faces dire economic consequences without immediate action. The truth is though, it's too late. The report says that Japan's current path and long time resistance to EVs will result in significant long term damage to its economy. About 82% of Japanese owned vehicle production is exported. And Japanese companies currently supply more than 13% of the world's passenger vehicles. This number will decline to no more than 5% at best by the end of this decade. Now, given the large, well, enormous slice of Japan that is employed in automotive related industries, this will result in massive job losses in the country. And like I said, Toyota themselves have agreed with this and said the same thing. About 8% of the Japanese workforce or over 5 million workers are directly employed in the automotive related industries. But most analysts and economists say that for every one job in the automotive industry, another 10 are created. That could mean up to 50 million people of Japan's workforce are in some way working in supported industries or directly in the industry supplying parts, manufacturing or sales to Japan's automotive industry. Now this report says that 1.7 million jobs would be lost, but I believe that figure is extremely conservative. So how can Japan move forward? How can they actually try to stop this massive loss and reverse these problems? Well, frankly, I honestly think it's too late. And I genuinely feel sorry for the Japanese economy, the Japanese people. I didn't believe they deserve this. Unfortunately, the truth is that much of Japan is an oligarchy. It's ruled by a very small number of extremely powerful people. Put it this way, Japan's largest company, Toyota, has a CEO who's not just the CEO of Toyota itself, he's also the CEO of the entire Japanese automotive industry. And he dictates much of what happens in Japan. Unfortunately, because Toyota chose not to support EVs and chose to actually lobby against them, he has led Toyota and the entire Japanese automotive industry down a path of destruction. Sure, you might not see it today, but give it a few years and it's inevitable. Now, on the other hand, California's industry is growing every single year. And because it has such a diverse range of companies, it doesn't rely on manufacturing. It doesn't rely on automotive manufacturing. In fact, not many people realize the Californian economy is supported more by agriculture than by anything else. Agriculture produces more than $60 billion in revenue every year. 
and generates more than $100 billion in related economic activity. But if you combine that with California's many other companies and consider the fact that 15% of the Fortune 100 are all located in California, then it's clear to see that California's GDP will not decline. In fact, it will just continue to increase for the next 10 years at a minimum. Fortunately for California, it does not rely upon manufacturing. Yes, manufacturing definitely is important for the state, but nowhere near as important as it is for Germany or for Japan. In 2021, Japan's GDP was 4.9 trillion US dollars. That same year, California's GDP was 3.4 trillion. However, it's expected that California's GDP would have grown to nearly $4 trillion over the past year. Now, it's impossible to know exactly when California's GDP will grow to being larger than Japan's, but we can guarantee that it will happen at some point before 2030. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.